What's up guys? Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. So we're doing some slow trolling for halibut. It's really early season right now, so uh, we're not really expecting anything. We're just coming out here, enjoy a nice day. Haven't been on the kayak in a while, so I missed it. I just wanted to get out here and have a little fun. Nick Fish is out here, Die Hard Fishing's out here. Fisherman's Life and um, Philosophy D are supposed to come be out here a little later too. Just step on them. So, yeah, we got the boys out here. Should be a fun day. Hopefully we catch some fish. My goal this year is I want to catch a 40 inch halibut, which is doable in the bay, but you know, not very common. So it'll be a challenge. Nick got one last year. He got a 40 inch alley and that thing was huge. So I want to get one this year. That's my goal. Definitely not going to get one today. It's way too early in the season. Water temperature is still cold. They're not really out playing yet. But once it warms up here in the spring, it's game on. So right now I just have uh, herring as bait. And I'm just making sure this this weight that I have on is bouncing on the bottom. I feel like being safe today, so I'm not, I'm gonna put this lanyard on my on my rod. Oh, hi guys, we got Daniel and Matt over here. Oh, oh, nope. <laughs> 20 bucks, right? All right, biggest fish gets $20 each from each person. Oh, oh I just had a bite. Just had a bite, I think. Didn't stick. Oh, I do have a fish. Fish on. That was so subtle. If I wasn't holding it, I wouldn't have felt that. Probably small. Ooh. Oh, that's a keeper, man. I'll, I'll flip him up. Okay. So that might be winner. That might be winner. Oh, yeah. Damn. All right, we got our first fish. Oh, so close, dude. 21 and a quarter. <laughs> 21 and a half? You know, it's it's total length. This is total length. It's mouth closed, but you can stretch the tail as much as you want. What do you think, 21 and a half? Yeah, that, by the end of the season, that guy's a take-home fish. Yeah, <laughs> a little just under keeper, but uh, biggest fish uh, so far of the morning. Adam has a 21 inch on the board, so mine's a 21 and a half, we'll call it. Could be the money fish. We put the pressure on Adam. <laughs> it's still way too early to get cocky because Adam can come back and catch one, get a keeper and win this whole thing. Now it's kind of like competition day. <laughs> we got five guys out here. Fisherman's Life, uh, Die Hard Fishing, Philosophy D, Nick Fish, and myself. And we're just going $20 uh, each. Whoever gets the pot. Whoever gets the biggest fish gets the pot. So far, I'm in the lead. Woo. Oh, you got to be kidding me. GoPro start recording. Got one on the pee. I was just peeing and I just got one. This one might be keeper. Feels heavy though. We don't want to net these halibut unless uh, they're keepers so they get that tail rot. But this one's pretty close, so I'm going to net it. Yeah, get them in there. Get them in. That's a Dude, keeper. Dude, it's the net stuck. Wow, thick. 23. Fish. Thick. 
keeper, baby. Or halibut something. sashimi time. <laughs> I haven't had halibut sashimi in a while, so I've been kind of craving it. And I think out of all the fish you fillet, mm -hmm. I think halibut is the coolest one. Oh yeah, I do love filleting halibut. You fillet halibut really nice. Thank you. Uh, all right, we're in. All right, guys, I'm gonna dispatch this guy, bleed him, and we're gonna have some halibut sashimi. Well, awesome, guys. I was really not expecting to get a keeper today. <laughs> Guess we got ourselves a video. <laughs> nice. I've been going a real slow troll, really slow. And like that last one, you know, I got it while I was peeing, so I wasn't even trolling. I was just, just there. Oh, Nick just got a keeper. Nice. Nice, dude. Hey, that's two keepers. Wow. A lot more productive in, than I thought it was gonna be. This is awesome. And there's really like nobody else out here besides our little group, because it's really early season, so. This might be a fish. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, that's close. It's another close one. Jeez. We got a runner. Come on. Just he's just kind of thin. Yeah. But he's pretty long. 21 and three quarter. Really close. See you later, buddy. Nice. We're hot, dude. Yeah, we. I think it's lunchtime. We got some kimchi fried rice that Jocelyn made last night. Usually when I eat, we get bit. Oh, <laughs> would have been funny if I got a bite right now. But it does happen quite often. <laughs> so yeah, we just got back from uh, Mexico. If you guys saw that Mexico video. That was a lot of fun. We had a good time in Mexico. It went by a lot faster than I thought it was gonna be. Man. I wanted to catch more fish out there, but unfortunately couldn't connect from shore. I was trying so hard, um, man, yeah, couldn't do it. Always going to new places, you know, it's difficult. You got to learn a whole new fishery, a whole different type, style of fishing. So yeah, um, so it's just going to be that one video from Mexico. But, yeah. Oh, GoPro start recording. I think I might have a fish. Oh no. Came off. Oh, Go GoPro, start recording. Actually, I do have a fish on. <laughs> Yeah, that's small. Shaker. Jeez, they're feisty, huh? Well, Nick and I were talking about heading in and we asked Adam how much longer he's gonna stay out here. And he said, until he catches a 24 incher, <laughs> he really doesn't want to lose. <laughs> it's only 20 bucks, come on, Adam. Whoa, my bait got destroyed. Look at this bait. God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ghost Pro, start recording. Oh, Ghost Pro, start recording. What just happened? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's a good one. Oh no, it came off. No, no, it's still on. Oh no. Oh, oh no. No, it's still on. 
still on, still on. Oh, striper then, huh? Yeah, maybe. Is that a striper? Maybe. Or accidental white sea bass. Dude, just came running at me. Oh, big halibut. That way. Oh. Oh, man. Damn. Who's doing head shakes for a bat ray? <laughs> I don't want him to whip his tail around and freaking stab me. Cute little guy. Ooh, shit! Keep that, keep that tail away from me, boy. <laughs> look at him! Look oh, at him. look at the, the look at stinger! The, yeah, he's trying to pull. Dude, get keep that away. There you go. Nice. Got him. Yeah, those are the that's the one species that scares me in California. Yeah. Stingrays. Stingrays are scary. Oh, look out. Okay, now it's getting windy, so now we're gonna head in. One more fish for the road. Little short guy. Probably about 20 inches. I'm gonna let him go. Oh, snapped off. <laughs> really good day of fishing. We didn't expect this. But I guess, you know, you never know unless you come out here. That was fun. That was very fun. All right, now let's head back. Isn't it? That was uh, Fisherman's Life and Philosophy D giving me and Nick a little, little ride. <laughs> All right, here's my fish. All right, Nick, let's see your fish. No. This one's mine. Yeah, I hit him in the head there. Yeah. 23 and a half. 23 and a half. All right. There you go. And Nick's. <laughs> oh, she. <laughs> Dang, man, that's, it's 23 and a half. It's really like the same. I guess we're going to call it a tie. All right, Daniel. You got, you got one? I do. Let's see it. Let's see it. Barely a keeper, but Barely. it's a keeper. <laughs> What did it measure to? 22 and a half. 22 and a half. <laughs> Matt? Just the shark. Sharks don't count. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll check my Venmo later. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, now we're at our favorite cooking spot. Jocelyn and I are in the van now. And we're gonna make a quick lunch with our halibut here. And still guys, these aprons are available on OutdoorChefLife.com. As well as this knife bag. Outdoor Chef Life night ba knife bags are also available. I take this everywhere. Holds uh, plenty of knives. I need my need my Yanagi today, and I need also this knife to fillet. I'm gonna take these also. So I'm gonna make some halibut sashimi. Uh, we're actually doing a type of sashimi called usuzukuri. It is very thinly sliced, super thin, and very minimal prep for this. All I'm gonna do is the red onions and umeboshi and we'll make a little sauce as well a little ponzu also while we do that we're gonna make rice because i'm also gonna make some ochazuke with the halibut cheeks all right we're gonna start with a little prep then we'll fillet the halibut red onion with some finely diced onion so we have here it's called umeboshi it's a pickled plum and it's very sour and uh Really tasty, kind of floral. So there's a, always a seed in there in the center. So I'm gonna take that out. See that? We're gonna make a little simple ponzu. I have some soy sauce here. Add a little bit of that. And I'm gonna add just as much water, or maybe a little less. Slightly watered down, and I have some yuzu juice here. Yuzu, this is yuzu right here. So it's a Japanese citrus. Jocelyn grew this one, but this one is just pure juice. And this one I'm gonna use the zest. Anyways, we're gonna add just a tiny bit of that. It's very strong, very concentrated. All right, now I'm gonna fillet the fish on here. I didn't, I haven't done anything to it. It's just been sitting on ice. There you go. Anytime you buy fish from a fish market, fish should be slimy. They're naturally slimy. So they always, when you buy one, if you buy one whole, should be slimy so you know uh, you can tell the freshness of it so this one since I'm doing sashimi and you know sushi like stuff 
I haven't made sushi in a long time, I feel like. And uh, I feel like my skills are getting a little rusty, my knife skills. So I gotta, gotta work on my knife skills again. We're just gonna, we're gonna do what's called a uh, sukibiki. I almost forgot what it's called. <laughs> sukibiki. So we're gonna scale it with the knife. So I, I think you've seen me do it before, but if you're new to the channel, maybe not. So what it is, it was just a Japanese technique of scaling fish. So I'll show you here. I'll go just, just go ahead and start it up. So we don't want to cut into the meat, just cutting the scales off. And you need a really sharp knife for this. There we go. This is the preferred method for sushi chefs to scale fish. Yes, it does take a little bit longer, but this way you don't make this you don't make a mess and you don't damage the meat of the fish that's the primary primary reason why sushi chefs do it like this because fish is delicate going well so far and I also want to work on my skills too you know also easier if you uh, cut the fins off because get in the way of a knife so if you want to practice your knife skills get develop your knife skills try this scaling technique and I'm using my Yanagi for this it's a single bevel knife and I think I did I kind of did cut into the, the skin there that's why I need practice let me see if I can get a little cheek out of them a little cheek meat this is a little guy so Maybe not too much, but still worth it because it's, it's delicious. All right, now I'm gonna take his head off, take the guts out, you know, the usual stuff. Just trying to make as little mess as possible in my van. Ooh, got some good stuff in here. You got some good stuff. We got some halibut liver, which is delicious. And we have some roe in there too. I'm gonna keep that for later. Is there a hook here? Uh, yeah, probably. But where's the hook? I don't know, it's all- Oh, it's right like, here. Yeah. Yep. No, that's my hook. Oh. <laughs> Swallowed it. Okay, let's fillet this fish. You know how, you guys know how I like to fillet. Score the edges first, even the tail here. Scaling the fish first allows you to be more accurate with your cuts. I'm just going to fillet this um, this side for now. I'm just going to take it easy, nice and slow, since I'm pretty rusty. Here I use the tip of my knife. Just scrape along those bones. And here is the rib cage, this, this bit right here. So I just go through that with the strong part of my knife, which is here. Now I use this part of my knife because that's use that curvature to get right in there. And just peel away at the fillet. And sh everything should just come right off. And I missed a tiny bit right there. That's it. And this is the angle here. Separate that. Get my knife in there. Pull it off. This angle is pretty small. There's not much on there. And then I'm going to split in half. Just under the center line. And then I'm going to take the center out. And then I'm gonna flip this and do the same thing to this Angawa side over here. So halibut can have parasites. And if they do have parasites, a lot of times it's on the belly side. So this is the belly side here. And the bigger they get, the more likely that they're gonna have a paras they're gonna have worms in there. And this one, it does kind of look like there might be something in here. Check out this part right here. 
this yellow stuff. Okay. It doesn't look like worms, but I'm not sure what it is. It could be a parasite though. So we're not going to use this side for sashimi. We're going to cook this side. Cooking it kills the parasites completely and it's 100% still edible. Instead, I'm going to use this top side. It's top loin because this slide is much less likely to have parasites. So now this board is pretty dirty on this side and I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it to the clean side. Okay, now we have a perfect piece. Another way to check if there's uh, parasites, hold it up to the light. And some of that, that squiggly stuff, that's just uh, blood vessels. And we can double check again after we slice. So like I said, we're gonna make some usuzukuri, which is thinly sliced sashimi, super thin. And I'm gonna use uh, this plate here. So here we go, first slice. And slice nice and thin. Directly on the plate. And when you're making sashimi, you gotta use a really sharp knife and really just go one slice, single slice. Oh, and then I said uh, earlier, we can double check if there's any parasites. Parasites are visible, you know? And when you cut it like this, super thin, it's so translucent, especially halibut. You can completely see if there's anything in there or not. And maybe at home, you don't want to risk it. Go ahead and freeze it first and then do it because you, you might miss it. You might miss the parasite and you might end up eating it. So my advice to you, just freeze it first. It'll be um, much safer that way. And if you're going to freeze it, if you want to kill the parasites, um, there is a guideline that FDA provides so uh, I'll just post that right here on the, on the screen. Something like uh, seven days if it's at a certain temperature. And then if you can get it really, really cold, then only just 24 hours. There it is, this is the plated version, but I'm gonna uh, top it with some garnish. Take a little bit of red onion and just place it on each one. Right there. Back to my roots. Okay, a little bit of umeboshi on each as well. All right, <laughs> a beautiful plate of usuzukuri. We have the sauce from earlier. I'm just gonna pour it right on there. Little yuzu zest. All right. Oh, we need to make some tea. So we have here, this is genmai cha, roasted rice green tea. This is what you wanna use for um, ochazuke. Some tea bags here. I think we'll put two in there, huh? Steep that for a couple minutes and we'll be ready. Put a umeboshi on there. This is ochazuke. Comes in a pack like this at the Japanese market. This is just one that I've been eating like since I was a kid. You just kind of shake it up. Just sprinkle it on there. Sprinkle it on your rice and then pour tea. Super simple. All right, the tea's ready. All right. And this hot tea is gonna cook the halibut here, the cheeks. Okay. All right, guys. Well, here it is. Here is our halibut usuzukuri with halibut ochazuke. Ah, mm. uh, did you forget Tasty. to bring a beer? Oh, damn it! I forgot to get a beer. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. All right. Let me take a little piece of usuzukuri here. Hmm. Wow, it's so good. Fresh halibut is so, so good. Yeah. Mm. Ochazuke always good. Mm. Always has the spot, anytime. Mm -hmm. Tender. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the plum and the onion. Good combo. Jocelyn loves uh, little <laughs> sheep. Mm. It's nice because you can just kind of grab a piece, roll it. Oh, there it is. And it looks really saucy, but the, the sauce, the ponzu, is very light. So you can put a lot on there, and it doesn't um, it doesn't take over the flavor too much. It's perfect. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our little halibut fishing uh, session today. And more to come. Season's just starting. It was a good day out there. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, thank you all for watching. If you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.